Stan, thanks for coming in. Let me shake your hand. I appreciate you being <laughs> here. Thank you. Let's start with your real name. Give me your name. Stanley Roy Richards. Okay. And uh, when were you born, Stan? October 20th, 1939. All right. Now, uh, currently, where do you live? I live at uh, Otway on Route 73. You know okay. the address? Or? Oh, yeah, give us the address. 8079 sir. State Route 73, All Otway. Right. Okay, right out there in God's country. You know? Right. Now, have you always lived there? Where, where did you live before then? I was a uh, manager at Shawnee State Forest. I lived at the ranger station for uh, from 1973 till 95. Okay, that's quite a while. You were out there then, weren't yeah, you? Yeah. Okay. Well, the, uh, the library likes to get a little family tree, so... Uh, what were your parents' names? What was your father's name? Franklin Richards. Okay. He was from Toledo, Ohio. How about your mother? What was her name? Elsie. Her maiden name was Wagner. She's from Gallia County. Okay. So uh, they, um, where, how did they meet? Do you know anything about that story? My grandfather was a uh, construction worker in, uh, from Gallia County, mm -hmm. and he was up at uh, Toledo working on a bridge on the Maumee River and they moved the family up there and my mother was going to Perrysburg High School mm -hmm. and that's where my dad was and that's how they met. That's how they met. Oh. Yeah. Okay, now uh, let's see how far back you can go. What was your father's parents' names? Do you know that? Yes. Uh, my grandfather's name was Stanley. I'm named after him. Okay. Uh, he was a Polish orphan that came over through Ellis Island somewhere around... Uh, 1990 or 19, uh, 19, somewhere about earlier than that. Probably. Ellis Island, he, he emigrated from Poland. He emigrated from Poland. Him and his brother were Polish orphans. Oh, gosh. And they came and uh, he met my grandmother, whose name was May Hintz. And, uh, was she, she Polish or what? German. She was German. Okay. Correct. Uh -huh. And my grandfather was a horticulturist and... Uh, he started a florist business in Perrysburg, Ohio, mm -hmm. and uh, he ran that till he passed away. Okay. Now, let me really challenge you. Your grandparents, grandfather's parents' names. Oh, my grandfather, I don't know because he was an orphan. He was an orphan. That's Polish correct. Orphan. You told me that. Yeah. Now, my mother's father, okay. his name was Roy Wagner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's a descendant of Dan Wagner from Gallia County. Mm -hmm. And uh, my great-great-grandmother was a McDaniels. And there's a McDaniels Crossroads in Gallia County named after her family. Really? Do yeah. you have this all written down somewhere? Is this? I got it right got here. in your head, okay. You might yeah. <laughs> yeah, all I've right. been told these stories many times. So. Okay, good. good. Yeah. Uh, now, your, your, uh, your mother's parents' names, uh, what... Uh, that was Roy and that Grace was, Wagner. That was the Wagners, was it? Yeah. Okay. And then the McDaniels go up that line, right? That was my grandmother's uh, maiden name, and okay. she married Dan Wagner. Okay. And uh, I'd have to do some research to go further than that. Have you been to the McDaniels Crossroads? Yes. Have you? Yes. <laughs> In Gallia County? Yes, I All have. Right. Um, now, uh, uh, your your parents did they ha did they have other children? Do you have siblings? I'm an only child. Okay, and then you got married, or did you get married? I've been married several times. All right, uh, you must like marriage the way I do it. I do it as often as I can. That, I don't like to be alone. I said, <laughs> I'm okay. not going to say that. I, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> now not... you have children. Yes, I have five children. Okay, by different marriages. By, okay, well. Uh, what are their names, your children's names? Shelby uh, Scott Richards. He's my oldest son. Now, wait a minute. Shelby Scott Richards, is that his whole name there? Yes. Okay. What does he do? He's a contractor, builds houses in Gallia County. Okay. And uh, does he have children? I have uh, two great, two grand, two grandchildren by him. Uh, All right. Colby, Colby, like Colby Cheese. I gotcha. And Lyle. Lyle. And, okay. Now, and he... I've got a... Two great-grandchildren by those boys. Oh, man. Okay. 
Yeah, they're moving along then, aren't they? Yes. In, in life and everything. Now you have a, a, another child. He was the oldest, right? Right. My second son's name's Craig Allen Richards. Uh -huh. uh, he's a maintenance supervisor at the Kyra Creek Electric Plant in Gaia County out of Gal Plus. Okay. And he has a, a son and a daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, my granddaughter lives in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Her husband is a construction worker, iron worker. Oh, my. And uh, my grandson is uh, living there in Gaia County also. I don't okay. have a comment on him. Okay. Now, number three. Number three is uh, Regina. Uh, she lives in, in uh, Atlanta. Uh-huh. And I got to think. Schrader is her last name. Her, Schrader is her yeah. last name. Yeah. Okay. She has children? Do you? She has one daughter. Okay. okay. Yeah. Emily. Emily from, mm -hmm. from uh, Regina. Mm -hmm. And now, are we down to the last one now? The last, the second. My, I have a daughter named Marie mm -hmm. uh, Downey. Her husband, her and her husband live in Jackson. Uh -huh. uh, he's a, got two Purple Hearts from Iraq. In the Iraqi War. He okay. was wounded twice, shot by a sniper, and hmm. blown up in a Humvee. And then I have a granddaughter named Adeline with them. Adeline. And then I have my last son is Eric Daniel. He's uh, making a career out of the army. He just made the majors list. He's hmm. done three tours in Afghanistan. Oh my! And uh, he's an infantry officer. Oh my! Okay. Airborne. Airborne, yeah, eighty second or hundred first. No, he's in the fourth division or fourth brigade combat team of the twenty fifth infantry division out of, of Alaska. Okay. The airborne paratrooper, or the Alaskan paratroopers, are called. Okay, yeah. that's that ought to be interesting. Yeah. Well, um, and then my father was yes, he was a World War Two veteran. He, he did was. the invasion of Sicily and the invasion of Italy. When okay, he was in the, in the army. Um, he's deceased now. Oh, that would be quite a story, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Was he in the invasion of Africa, too? You know, yeah, he was in Africa, Africa, yes. But okay. he, uh, the war, World War II was his demise. Oh, it was. Yeah, he yeah. died at 46 years old. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, then uh, where did you graduate from high school? Perry's, or uh, Haskins, Ohio, a little town outside of Bowling Green. Haskins, uh, near Bowling Green. Okay. Wood County. Wood County. Mm-hmm. So now um, we're graduating from high school. What do you do? What do you do then? I went in the service, 17. Went in the Army? Went in the Air Force. Went in the Air Force. Air Force, Air Force National Guard. Yeah, okay. Uh, and you were uh, 17. What, what made you go in the Air Force? Uh, I just had to get away from home. Had to get away and have an adventure. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. <laughs> okay, okay. How long were you in the Air Force? I went in the Air Force National Guard and I went to uh, basic training in uh, San Antonio, Texas and then went to oh, yeah. aircraft mechanic school in uh, Amarillo, came back and when I got back the jobs, there wasn't any jobs around. So I had to come, my family roots were in Gallia County. I came back there and I got a job with uh, Evans Grocery Company. The old Evans Grocery Company. I don't know if you remember them or not. They had a store here in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. Evans. And went to Schaefer's after that. Became oh, Schaefer's. Yeah. I know Schaefer's more than I know Evans. I yeah. Think. yeah. Anyway, uh, due to the fact that there was no National Guard units here, they took me out of the, the means I had a six-year obligation to the Air, Air National Guard, and I couldn't fulfill that obligation where I was living. They put me in the Army National Guard. They actually transferred you to the Army? From the, uh, the reserve component put me in the Army. So, so you, were you in the Army then, or were you an Air Force person attached to that particular no, unit? No, they, they discharged me out of the Air Force National Guard and put me in the Army National Guard. Okay. Oh. And, you know, I, I just didn't like that. What, what, what unit was that? It was a 247th Tank Battalion in Ashland, Kentucky. Ashland, Kentucky. Yeah. Okay, so there you are in the National Guard of the Army in Ashland, Kentucky, and you didn't like it. <laughs> so I requested to go on active duty. Okay. So I what, was, what year would that be about? 1960. 
1960, you wanted to go on active duty. Right. Now, when, when did you, by the way, when did you join the Air Force? When, when did you first go? February of 1957. 57, okay. Now you find yourself in the Army in 1960. Yes. Active duty? Yes. I was an enlisted reservist sent to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and I was in a replacement depot, hmm. and my service number had an ER in front of it, enlisted reservist. Hmm. Well, at that time, nobody, the regular Army guys, they didn't, you know, you were kind of a piece of crap if you were an yeah. enlisted reservist. So yeah. I talked to my company commander, and I, he said that I should re-enlist RA. So I re-enlisted for six years. So you, the, you re-enlisted in, uh, in 1960 yeah. or 61? Six, 1961. You, you enlisted? May of 61, I re-enlisted okay. regular Army. Okay. Did you have to do any basic training? In, in I had already Army? done basic training, but I... I I was a specialist fourth class, E4, and the first sergeant I had said that he was going to send me to the NCO Academy rather than go through basic training. So I went to the Non-Commissioned Officers Academy and mm -hmm. passed that mm -hmm. and became a DI. And oh, I really? taught basic training. Oh, Army really? Basic. You're one of those guys? One of those guys, <laughs> yeah. Where, where, did, where were you when you were drilled? Uh, I was in uh, at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, let's see, A Company, 12th Battalion, 4th Training Regiment. I can remember that. It was an armor school then, wasn't it? Well, uh, yeah, but we taught infantry basic there, too. Yeah, and basic, too. Yeah. Yeah. So then... Uh, you know where Ireland Army Hospital was? I was in that hospital for 45 days. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I, uh, I fought the Vietnam War behind a desk down in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had a, while well, I was there, I got sick and I had a spontaneous pneumothorax. My right lung collapsed. Thank God. So they put me in the hospital there and put a tube in me until I could get straightened up and went back to doing basic training. Okay. And uh, in 1962, I came out on orders to go to Germany. And I'd made sergeant by then. And I went to the... Uh, 24th Infantry Division, 21st Infantry Regiment, and I was in several companies while I was there. It was a, it was a, they went for, to regiments, to battalions. They went from regiments to battalions in 1963. And uh, I went from E Company uh, as an infantry squad leader to headquarters company as a, uh, a guided missile tank okay. unit, we call it the INTAC missile. Uh, I forget how that acronym stands for, but it was a wire guided missile that you flew was off. Was it a tow? It was like a tow. Mm -hmm. it was a be that was the beginning of the tow. Okay. But it was a joystick, and you sat behind it with a pair of binoculars, and you saw the tank going out there, and you'd fire this missile, and you'd like flying a model airplane, fly yeah. that apply that toe into the... You'd have to keep eyes on the target, wouldn't you? Right. You know, yeah. I always thought that would be kind of... Ridiculous. It was, it was, <laughs> it was tough. Yeah. But uh, were you in Germany by now? Yeah, I was in Germany at okay. that time. Where, yeah. where were you stationed over? I was at uh, Munich. In 20, Munich? In the 24th Division in Munich, yeah. Okay. Did, did you go up to the East German line much? Or no, uh, I, I did some leave time, went to Batols. Uh, where was it? Batols, Germany, where Berchtesgarden. Oh yeah, Berchtesgarden, at, uh, where Hitler Southern was. Germany, yeah. where Hitler was. Yeah. Toured that, went to Italy, uh -huh. Berchtesgarden. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Innsbruck, Austria. Yeah. Now, was this when you were on leave? You hit yeah, that or a weekend it? pass, we could drive there from... Oh yeah. It was, you know, yeah. My daughter lives in Munich. Is that right? So, so we've been to that, uh, that uh, oh, what's the name of that? Big lake there down below the Eagles. The Amher yeah. Sea, they call it. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Neue Schweinstein Castle, did no. you go to that? No, I don't the remember. The Disney Castle? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> no, we didn't go to the castle. Uh -uh. Uh, but, the, but you, now when you're on duty, you're in a guided missile unit. Or well, no, I was in a, a I tank was in unit. A, I was in an anti-tank unit, anti, but, anti, okay. but it was just a platoon in, in the headquarters company, the 1st Battalion, 21st Infantry Regiment. 
now, which would was that, a mechanized unit. Now, on maneuvers or anything, would you get up close to the East German borders or anything? No. Okay, no. I think you're closer to Czechoslovakia, yeah, there, right. wasn't it? I got to Dachau. You did? Yeah, Dachau. Yeah. My, you could look out the, if you got up on the roof of the barracks that I was in, you could look and see Dachau. It was 11 it. miles from where we were at. Okay. How long were you there? At three years. Three years. Yeah. Did you My like second that? son was born here. Oh, yeah? Okay. So did you, did you like that duty? Yeah, I did. Okay. I, be, I started, I took up mountain climbing while, while I was there, which uh, when I got reassigned back to the States, I was sent back to the 5th Infantry Division at Fort Carson, Colorado mm -hmm. as a mountain climbing instructor at the NCO Non-Commissioned Officers Academy there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was in uh, May of 65 when I came back. Okay. Uh, and, the 5th uh, Division? Yeah, the Red Diamond. Red Diamond, okay. I, I, know, I know of the 4th, isn't the 4th at Fort Carson too? It is now. It is now. It wasn't the 10th. Okay, okay. Uh, the 10th Mountain Division was there, the 4th, the 5th Infantry Division was there, and the 4th Infantry Division was there. That's where my son was when he was first sent to Afghanistan. He oh. was with the 4th Division at Fort Carson. At the four. How long were you at, at, at there, Fort Carson? Well, on, uh, <laughs> on December the 28th, 1965, I walked in the order room and the first sergeant handed me orders to go to Vietnam. In 1965? In 19, December you 28th. You were the first. And I said, when am I leaving? And he said, you're leaving tomorrow morning. And I said, well, I've got my family here. I had two kids and a wife there. And he said, don't worry about that. The Army will take care of them. Did you ask him, where is Vietnam? <laughs> I knew where it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. That was a, I'd come out on orders in October to go, but being as I was in the NCO Academy, the General Maroon, who was the base commander, the mountain team was his guys. You know, mm -hmm. we'd put on a mountain climbing demonstration in Cheyenne Canyon twice a week for the public to see. But, oh my! Yeah. And uh, so he got me out of the, out of those orders the first time. The second time it didn't work. It didn't work. Okay. So uh, well, the next day you're on your way to Vietnam. No. The, they, he told me a lie. Next day, we was on our way to Panama. That's not Vietnam. That's not Vietnam. <laughs> but it was uh, jungle warfare school. Okay. So uh, there was a fellow by the name of Charles Dijon, who was a buddy of mine. And we were together in Germany, and we came back, and we were at Fort, Fort Carson together. And our families knew each other. He was on the same orders that I were. And uh, we went to Jungle Warfare School, and I got out of there, and then we went to Vietnam. Yeah. And, uh, both of you? Did both and we flew through? over on the same airplane. Mm -hmm. And we uh, got in country, and they asked us if uh, anybody wants to stay together, you know, buddy up. And we raised our hand. We wanted to buddy up, so they sent us to the same company. We went mm -hmm. to the 1st Infantry Division. First Battalion, Second Infantry. Now, flying over, uh, did did you fly out of uh, the United States or Panama? No, we flew out of the United States, out of California. Uh, California. I had a few days leave before okay. I went. I got to go home, and then I met him in California. Okay. Did did you stop in Hawaii on the we way? We stopped over? in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. And then was it uh, straight to Vietnam or Japan? Went to Guam, I think. Went to Guam. Yeah, that I think I've heard that. Yeah. Okay. And then to Vietnam. Coming back from Vietnam, I came through uh, Tokyo to Alaska, right. back to California. How long were you in Vietnam this time? Uh, this time? I came. My, my father died the 28th of December of '66, and I came home. I had my orders to my reassignment orders, and uh, I got to leave 10 days early oh. for emergency leave. So I did basically 11 months. With the months there? Yeah. Okay. But my time started December the 28th. My, my right. in-country time started the, when I got the orders to go to Panama. That, that, that counted towards my year. So All right. Okay. So now, now what's, uh, so in, in Vietnam, where were you? In what year? I was, uh, my unit was B Company 1st and 2nd Infantry, and we uh -huh. were in a town called Phuc Vinh, which was about 80 miles towards the Cambodian border from Saigon. Mm -hmm. Now, are you are you still a 
a tow, semi-tow? Or no, a, an infantry squad yeah. leader. I had 11-man yeah. infantry squad. Okay. We were, is, is your, what's your MOS, 11B or 11B. Okay. It was 11B in one, all the time. Oh, well, was it? Even with those tow missile guys are 11 Bravos or 11 okay. Charlies, but I was 11B. Okay. So, but now you really are a grunt, you, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, was there much going on then in 1960 in, in that area? Uh, Sadly to say that my year in Vietnam, we had, out of my unit, 25 KIAs. Oh. I don't know how many WIAs we had. Oh. Yeah. But my friend got killed on the 9th of July. De Jong? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well then, how many straight days in the field did you do? We would go out sometimes uh, for up to 90 days. A long time. We'd go on a sweep, we'd, we'd be helicoptered in, we'd sweep an area, they'd pick us up and helicopter us into another area, mm -hmm. and that might be uh, a rear area in the field, and we'd get a couple days, and then we'd go in and start sweeping again. It was it, sweep and destroy, we just yeah. kill and burn. Is your, is your um, weapon at that time, is it the M16 at that yes. time? Yes, Okay. piece of crap. I was going to ask you about that. I've, I've heard uh, guys come in and say they had to field strip in the middle of a battle. They had yes. to field strip their weapon. The reason for that is, is it was uh, they they fixed them. The bolt, something about the bolt was not. You'd get a little dirt in it. It malfunctioned. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done some modifications to that. Uh, the weapon they carry today is basically the same. Operate, the operation part of it is basically the same as the M16. The design of it's a little bit different. You know, mm -hmm. they, they can put scopes on them and stuff now that they couldn't do back then. But uh, the basic operation of the M16, the M2, they call it the M, uh, I think it's the M2 that my son carries. Uh, he didn't have any problems with it in Afghanistan. Never did malfunction. Yeah, I think they He got to use it over there too, by the way. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. Well. And, and then um, the, the M16, did you have the M14 over there? We didn't have an M14. The other weapon that I had off and on, I carried a Model 12 Winchester 12 gauge shotgun. Okay, yeah, yeah. So now you're, you're, in, um, you're coming home and you're going to fly to Tokyo, right? You're going to leave Vietnam and go to Tokyo. Well, I didn't know where I was man? going. I, uh, like I said, when when my father died, I uh, I'd had a run in with the Red Cross because I'd gotten a letter from Brown Army Hospital that my father was critical in the hospital, and I took that letter over. And this guy kind of alluded that you're just trying to get out of Vietnam, you know, blah blah blah. Mm. Well, that same day that I saw him was the day my father died, and he had to come back and tell me that after that. You know? mm -hmm. But he didn't come to me. He went to my first sergeant. My first sergeant told me that. He didn't have the nerve to do it. So uh, yeah. first sergeant said, well, get your stuff ready. There's going to be a helicopter pick you up in the morning at the LC out there. So I got all my stuff, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited. <laughs> it was a payday. We're there by then. It was you know the 29th or 30th, I forget. And this helicopter landed and it was loaded. I, I ran up to the pilot and I said, "Are you here to pick me up? I'm supposed to be on emergency leave, being fly me back to Zeon to division headquarters to get me out of here." He said, "No." He said, "I'm I'm flying payroll." And he said, "I'm overloaded, but he said you can get on. If we can fly, I'll take you there." So I crawled on that helicopter and they flew me back to Zeon. And the Red Cross had, there was nothing, they hadn't done anything. So I went into the, and I got my orders processed. I had to wait, they had to verify that my father died, blah, blah, blah. And of course, in Vietnam, you know, you're, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and communications are not like they are today, you know. So things were kind of slow. Anyway, I got my orders, and... Uh, I was supposed to get a flight out of Thompson Newt Air Base, but I didn't have any transportation to get there from Xeon. So 
I saw a convoy going out and I jumped on that convoy going to Saigon and they dropped me off to you and I missed my airplane mm -hmm. by about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, How long did you have to wait for another one? Uh, three or four hours for another one. It was Continental Airlines is what I flew back on. Mm -hmm. So then I didn't know where we were going when we flew to Tokyo and went to Alaska and then landed in California and then I... Uh, there was the Red Cross hadn't done anything to get me out of California to get me back to Ohio. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went up to, to a clerk and had my emergency leave orders and I bumped a colonel off the plane to... Did you? It was New Year's Eve and that, you know everything was booked. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I flew from there to Chicago and from Chicago to Dayton. I rented a car in Dayton and drove home. Mm -hmm. that's, the way, that's the way it turned out. Then I was reassigned, my reassignment was at Louisville, Kentucky, as a Hunter's Division Advisory Group, as an Army advisor to a bunch of guys that were, didn't give a shit whether they went to Vietnam or not. You was know. that the 100th Division, you say? Hunter's Division Advisory Group. Right, right. Have you heard of them? I, I've heard of the 100th Division at Louisville. Yeah, yeah. they were at Bolton Field. Yeah, yeah. That's where I was at. That's oh. when I got, and I was, uh, I'd signed an intent to re-enlist. I thought I'd make the Army a career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was having marital problems big time. Mm -hmm. I had two kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got to the counter to re-enlist, it was at Fort Hayes in Columbus. I said, process me out, I'm out. Oh. So I quit. Mm -hmm. Was that it then for the Army? No, I. Uh, that was in 1967. Yeah. And uh, I was I was pretty messed up from I, I'm seventy percent disabled now from PTSD yet today, okay. and hundred percent for unemployability. But uh, I uh, worked at different jobs, and uh, I must have had fifteen jobs between then and uh, nineteen seventy one. Hmm. Between 67 and 71, I sold insurance, I hauled pizzas, I worked in a grocery store. Uh, I, you know, Is this in Columbus? I went to Arizona, I worked in Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, went back to Columbus, uh, and my mother had remarried after my father died, and his name was Woody Saunders. He, he was a... Uh, he managed the liquor stores in Southern Ohio from Athens. His office was in the wildlife office in Athens. Yeah. And he called me and told me that I uh, got just a job for you. He said, I need an assistant manager at Hocking Hill State Park, and with your military background, you fit the bill for that. Mm. And uh, I was managing a grocery store on Briggs Road in Columbus at the time. And uh, so did that sound like a pretty good deal for you? Well, I, I didn't know what it was. So I, I interviewed for the job and you know, back then the state government's political as hell. Mm -hmm. you, you know. And uh, uh what's his name was governor in seventy one. He's the one that closed the parks. Uh Gilligan. Gilligan. Mm -hmm. Gilligan was better. Mm -hmm. Well my stepfather was a big Democrat. I wasn't anything. I didn't care. You know Gilligan was a Democrat. I know that. <laughs> And uh, anyway, uh, make a long story short, I, I got hired for that job. And uh, I had to wear a uniform every day, like being in the military. Mm -hmm. I had a vehicle to drive, a uh, state vehicle to drive. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Uh, I lived at the Rock House in the state residence. I didn't have to pay rent. I had free gas from the gas well there. You know, I started out at $2.90 an hour which was a lot less than what I was making in Columbus, but mm -hmm. with all the perks, it, you know, it was cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I stayed there at Hocking Hills for 18 months and came to Shawnee in 73. Mm -hmm. I applied for the manager's job in uh, 76. I was assistant manager at Shawnee, living at uh, Lombard's Military Ranger Station off of 73 there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I applied for the job. In the meantime, Rhodes had got elected as governor. Oh, he's a Republican. Yes. <laughs> and uh, 
Bob Teeter got appointed as the Director of Natural Resources. General Bob Teeter, by the way, at the National Guard. Really? Are you in the Guard by then? Or, or no, reserve I'm getting to that. I'm getting to okay. that. Okay. This is a story. <laughs> There's a story here. So I applied for the manager's job, and uh, I was selected for the job by the chief of Ernie Gebhardt, who was the chief of forestry at that time. And they said, they said, well, you got, I got a letter saying that I was, all units and staff, Stan Richards been promoted to manager, blah, blah, blah. And they said, you got to move from the ranger station at 73 to the one down on 52 there at the headquarters. You got to move down there. Ernie was the kind of guy you lived on the forest because of forest fires. They wanted you hands on all the time. <laughs> so I'm in the process of moving and the district forester comes down and says, stop moving. You're not getting that job. I said, really? I said, yeah, Bob Teeter's not going to sign your paperwork. He said he's the appointing authority, not Ernie Gebhardt. Hmm. And I said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to have that job if I only have it for one day. I said, I've got this letter here. I want to see the director. So I got to see the director, and he asked me why I wanted the job, and I told him I went through the interview process, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know, I said, when they sent me to Vietnam, the and gave me an M16 and told me to go out there and shoot these North Vietnamese. They didn't ask me if I was a Democrat or Republican. You don't have that right either. Mm -hmm. You know what he said? Mm -hmm. You got the job. There you are. Now, let's talk about the Army National Guard. He said, I'm the commander of the 73rd Infantry Brigade in Columbus. They're drilling next Saturday. I expect to see you. <laughs> and he did me a big favor because... Yes. I, make, I, I joined the Army National Guard, and uh, I was there from 1980, I guess, mm -hmm. till uh, I retired in 91. I made command sergeant major. Did you? And uh, I had enough points for my active duty time that uh, I got my medical my wife for my wife and me, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mm -hmm. Bob did me a big favor. I'm indebted to him. He's passed away now, but yeah. Dorothy's still alive. His wife. I still correspond with. And him. and you made command sergeant major. Yes. Okay. Where did you drill? Where did you drill? drill? Sullivan Avenue uh, Armory in Columbus. In Columbus. I drove up there, you know, several mm -hmm. times, and then I went to Newark to the 73rd. Uh, 737th Maintenance Battalion is uh, Battalion Sergeant Major there. And that's when I retired because I was the infantry guy. I didn't like that maintenance stuff. No, heck no. <laughs> well, that, that, that's interesting. Now, now, uh, so you retired out of the Army. Yes. Then. Okay. And uh, do, do you um, still keep in touch with any of the people that you met in the Army, even from... Back in Germany and, and that sort of thing, or Vietnam? Or? I know one fellow that I was in contact with. One fellow that I, in Germany, was from, from Gal Plus. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I see, I've seen him a couple times. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm don't. i not friends with him or anything other than just an acquaintance. But I go to Pigeon Forge every May for the 1st first first Battalion, 2nd Infantry Regiment reunion. And I've got uh, contact with uh, Roy Seiler, who was a team leader in my squad. Mm -hmm. in, uh, Is that Vietnam? Yeah. Okay. Ed Cubbage was a rifleman in my <clears throat> squad. And uh, I'm in contact with Richard Glenn, who is a, another guy that lives in Philly. He doesn't go to the reunions, but I talk to him quite a bit. Mm -hmm. He was a rifleman in my squad. And... Uh, John Lloyd, he passed away from Agent Orange. He had uh, brain cancer. He was the other team leader I had with Siler. And uh, there's uh, Charlie Company, uh, the first and second. There's several guys that I know that uh, were there. See, I was, uh, my time in Vietnam really started Easter Sunday in 1966. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had the first contact with the enemy. Were you fighting a North Vietnamese then or the both. Viet Cong? Or both. Both of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, We got ambushed by the Viet Cong on uh, Easter Sunday, 1966. And uh, 
I lost a good buddy named Eddie Levering and then Sergeant Barnes and Private Roth. They were both all three killed that day. And then uh, we got out of that. And then uh, the 9th of July, my company was augmented to the Quarter Cav, a mechanized unit. And, what uh, cab was it? The quarter cab. Quarter. Fourth cab of the first infantry division. Quarter. Fourth. Yeah. They call them the quarter horse. Gotcha. Um, we were, you can read about this. There's stories written about this. It's called the Battle of Thunder Road. Thunder Road. Mm -hmm. We were augmented. Each fire team was put in a armored personnel carrier. And there was Charlie a, C Troop and B Troop of the cab. And we had several tanks and all these 113s we were riding in down this road. And we were sent in as bait to the NBA, which was the 271st and the 272nd NBA regiments. And they ambushed us at 11 o'clock in the morning on the Menthon Road. So it worked? You being bait? Yes. Huh. They had two or three battalions stacked up at different locations, setting in the helicopters with them running to come in and cut them off when they tried to escape because and we ended up uh, killing about 230 of them. Mm. And we took heavy casualties too. And uh, that's when DeGene got killed, my buddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Von Tour, and I could name some more of them. Mm. And uh, so things, we were sent back to base camp after that. And then uh, we were supposed to do a, that was in July, then in August, we were supposed to do this road clearing operations, which we had done several times between our base camp in Phuc Vinh and Saigon to run trucks to haul ammunition to the artillery, their base load back. Uh, they brought supplies for the company's food and stuff. And they'd convoy for a week just about on those roads going back and forth. And we'd pull road security We'd go out in the morning and take a mine sweep or sweep the road for mines set up out there. Well, Charlie Company sent a patrol out the 25th of August. And uh, they got lost. They called them the Lost Patrol. Uh, they got, I was working in the headquarters company at that time and as the assistant operations sergeant for the battalion. I'd been transferred from Bravo Company to headquarters company in the 1st of August, matter of fact. And I got promoted to E6 and staff sergeant at that time. And uh, the uh, patrol called back in that they were lost. They didn't know where they, they were trying to get back into come in from the patrol and they couldn't find their way back. So we fired parachute flares. They couldn't see them. They so wanted they were to, lost at nighttime. Daytime, no, well, it was getting dark, yeah. yeah. But you can see those flares in the daytime too. Okay. But, uh, well, to start off with, they wanted us to send a helicopter and they were gonna pop a smoke, a purple smoke that the helicopter could see and give them a fix. They weren't too far away. They uh, they were they were probably a thousand yards out there somewhere from the road, but they they didn't they were walking in circles. Yeah. So uh, the helicopter couldn't fly. The helicopter had to go back to Fug Bend to get fuel, and then it started raining, and they couldn't fly after that. So then it started getting dark. They shot the flares up. They couldn't see the flares, so. We told them to dig in for the night and stay there until morning. We'd get them out of there. Well, they had moved into a VC complex, the Viet Cong, the Fuloi Battalion, it's called. And uh, when they woke up the next, when they got up, got daylight, they they were right in the middle of them. Mm. They had moved in there in the dark and got right in the middle in their trenches and stuff. And uh, we were sitting in a command post. And uh, all hell broke loose. We could hear it. You could hear it on the radios? No, we could hear it. We They're could only hear a thousand it. yards out, aren't they? Yeah, we could hear it. So uh, 
they sent Bravo Company in. We sent Bravo Company in to try to bail them out, and they got ambushed along there along the way. And uh, the Cav Quarter Cav tried to take the tanks and stuff in there to get them out, and they got ambushed along the way. And this thing raged on all day the 25th, all day the 26th till the 27th, and uh, that's uh, that was another big day. So uh, were, you, were you with the quarter cab then that went in? No, I went with the command post. We went in and uh, the uh, my battalion commander got killed that day, Major, Major Clark. He oh. got killed by a sniper. Uh, several other guys that I know were, were killed. But uh, Did you finally reach the patrol? Yes. We, we did. And... Uh, out of the 15-man patrol, I think seven of them lived. The rest of them were killed. Oh. Yeah. That was another big day. Right. Yeah. So then, and then the last one that I was... The last battle? was uh, I really wasn't involved in it, but my section got claymored, and I was in Bung Tau on a three-day R&R. Oh, my. Yeah. And, uh, Where'd you go for R&R? Bung Tau in country. I didn't go on a... I've been going on out of country by an hour. But uh, uh, so they got the, Ray, the, the yeah. Sergeant Guzman, who was the communication sergeant for our section, he got killed that day. And uh, Corporal Gowden, who was a radio operator, he got killed that day. And Sergeant Furphy, who was a, had been in my infantry squad in B Company, he got transferred to headquarters company when I did, and uh, he got killed that day. So that's rough. The whole thing's rough, you know. And I deal. I could deal with. The, I could deal with the deal. I couldn't deal with it when I first got back. I, uh, How is it now? It's bad right now. And the reason, you know, it's, uh, when I'm work. When I was working, my mind was occupied with doing every day. You know, I had crisis at work all the time, doing stuff. You know, just like yeah. you know. When you're working, you're, I don't know if you're retired or not. But. Well, I've been retired now. I've been trying to retire for about five years. I still go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I have triggers that come up and bring all this stuff back, you know. And talking to you is probably not a good thing about this. It'll probably. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, why do you want to talk then? I, I go to therapy and. My therapist told me that you know you can't keep this stuff bottled up inside of you. You need to, if you can, talk about it. Is this a friend of mine? I wonder that you go to therapy too. That he, he's in the was in the fifth third build fifth third bank building. No, no, oh. I go to the VA in Chilcothy. Oh, 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 okay. I go up there. We got a peer group of about eighteen other veterans. We sit in a room like this. Okay. We don't talk about the war. We talk to each other. Yeah. Are they mostly Vietnam guys? Most of them are Vietnam. We've got one guy who is a, was a medic in uh, Afghanistan, or I'm not sure. He was in the the Gulf War, or one of them. In uh, his helicopter was shot down. He was a medic, and he's got problems. Uh -huh. uh, with another kid, I don't know what his job was, but he's he's tried to commit suicide several times. And, you know, you just need a support group. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if your mind's busy, if your mind's busy, you don't think about that stuff. But when you're... You're retired now, so you have a lot more time to think I, about it? Yeah, I, things come up, you know, they pop up. Do you have dreams? You watch movies or... Yeah, watch if you movie. see a... Do you watch war movies? I don't watch war movies. Mm -hmm. Do you have dreams? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My yeah. wife says I yell and scream at night. I don't remember the dreams. Yeah. You know, but she's, you know, I have sleepless nights, but mm -hmm. uh, I try not to pound her on it. But you're the second one I've talked to about this. I uh, had Pastor Rick Scott or Rick Clark, I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, he asked myself and John Hall, used to be the sheriff. John, yes. Mm -hmm. He asked us to do a talk at church on Veterans Day to get up on stage and discuss this stuff that we're talking about. Did you do that? I did that. And John did it and we were both we both suffered from it afterwards, you know, we just 
I'd like to see John down here. I'd like to interview him. You see him much? I see him every Tuesday. He goes to that group with me. Will you tell him about me? And yeah. My, I'm, all that sort of thing. Okay. I'm trying to get him to, to upgrade his claim at the VA. Mm -hmm. uh, he's suffering bad from PTSD and Mm -hmm. I'll tell you about that when we turn this thing off. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Now that, that you have, uh, what are your, you have the combat infantryman badge, don't you? I was awarded two bronze stars and I uh, got one for Valor yeah. on the 25th of August. And then I got the combat infantry badge, meritorious mm -hmm. service, two meritorious service ribbons. Did, did, this, did this era, my cousin was, was over there and uh, he said he would pick up a, a AK-47 and use off the battlefield. Yeah, he he was in a. a the only problem with that is his ammo, getting ammo. For getting it. ammo for it. He'd you take him off a dead soldier or something yeah. like that. You know. But you need to find he, a basic load to carry weapon. around. He liked that weapon. Yeah. yeah. All guys like those. All of us like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, now, when you you came home, you came home. Uh, you flew into uh, Alaska and then uh, California. Right. Okay. Where, where did you get off the plane at? Right, right outside of Fort Ord. I'm not sure where Fort Ord is. I don't even remember. Is either LA or Los Fort Angeles? Fort Ord is somewhere out there. Yeah, California. LA, um, um, was it a civilian plane or a military? Yeah, it was Continental Airlines. Okay. When when you got off the plane, did anybody give you any trouble? I mean, not they, then. Huh? 66, 67. They, they actually the the war. Protesting, I don't think, started until 77, 78 in that area. Oh, 68, yeah. 68, I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I came back and New Year's Eve was 67. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And now, then I think, you know, when, uh, when was uh, uh, Kent State? 1970. Yeah, so that's, that was just, Big May. start, May. yeah, that May, was a big start. Yeah, mm -hmm. I um, there was World War. You know, I don't know when. '68, uh, I think, was when uh, the mall in Washington D.C. where they had. Uh, yeah, that's a big, big uh, march then. I think it was. It was that '68 mm, after Tet Offensive after February '68 when they. I think it was. See, Walter Cronkite's the worst enemy we had. Really. I would think it'd be Jane Fonda. Well, her too. But Walter <laughs> Cronkite was the guy that turned the war around. When he did actually. Yeah. He, uh, he had a broadcast. And he we said, had him whipped, and we had we had to, we had the Viet Cong whipped. In did you? Yeah, yeah. They were done, but uh, we gave him a political victory. Um, did Did you like the army? Loved it. Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd do it again. Would you? Yeah. Okay. And you, you have your sons, some of your, a couple of your sons are in the service. My right? one son, my you youngest son. Okay. Yeah, well, my son-in-law and my son-in-law is still in the reserves. Is he? Yeah, he drives from Jackson to Cleveland to go to drill. That's a long way. He's a sergeant. He's an E-8 master sergeant. Okay. He's in the PSYOPs unit. That's interesting. Yeah, that's what he was deployed with that unit when he went to... Iraq. He was deployed as a reservist. Mm. Now your son, though, he's uh, is he a major? He he's on the major's list. He made the list, so he'll be a major by next year. Okay. Well, he's that's he's, a career, isn't it? Yeah, he's a foreign foreign area service officer now. He's branched out of the infantry to become a FAO. They call it foreign area service officer. Mm -hmm. He's presently in Washington, D.C., taking Vietnamese language, which is a year-long course. It's the Vietnamese language? Yeah. His assignment will be Southeast Asia. Oh, okay. So he can be anywhere in Southeast Asia. I, th I think that's it. Do you have anything else you'd like to like to say, Stan? Anything you'd no, like to I appreciate talk you. about? I just pre appreciate you pretty taking the time to interview me. No, I appreciate you. We, we've uh, maybe got up to, I don't know, we're shooting up to 200 interviews by now. Yeah. In that area. I've, I, inter I've interviewed guys that survived Pearl Harbor. That's great. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I often, yeah, I'm on, I'm on the, uh, I'm a commissioner on the Scioto County uh, Veterans Service oh, you are? office. Okay. 
Yeah, I served with uh, Rick, Rich Fraley, Hi, Lee, Rick. Lee Bass. I don't know if you've interviewed Lee. Oh yeah, Lee. Uh, Tell Lee you retire. Yeah, I know him. I, I love old Lee. He's a good He's guy. Good guy. Yeah, good guy. Uh, Stan McGiven. Stan. Oh yeah, Sam. I used to Sam. I mean, good yeah. old Sam. We got a new guy on there. Is Alfred? Uh, forget his last name. He's a Navy guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's a. I think he's a Vietnam era mm -hmm. veteran. Well, pass that around down there. I've interviewed some of those guys that you're talking about. Yeah, like Lee and Sam and so forth. But uh, um, how, how about Bill? Um, Bill. Um, oh yeah, Dylan. Yeah, yeah, Bill. Quite nice. Yeah, he's yeah. he works full time for us. There. He's yeah. a good guy. I like Bill. Yeah. And. Uh, Kim's son, Kim Demowicz's son, is the assistant fire chief. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a 20-year veteran, too. Mm -hmm. Helicopter pilot. Really? You know who I'm talking about? I don't know him. Uh, What's his name again? I'm thinking. No one be 80 years old. I can't think oh, of yeah. <laughs> The short-term memory kind of. Is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tell those guys. Uh, get in touch with me. I don't yeah. Know. Anything else you'd like to talk about? No, not really. You're married now, aren't you? I'm married now. I've been married 25 years to okay. my wife's from South Shore, Kentucky. All right. Mm -hmm. She was uh, put up with me. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them didn't. But Is she number three? Five. She's number five. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got yeah. me beat. <laughs> <laughs> How many have you had? Three. Yeah. I'm on number three now. Yeah. Yeah. But well, no. she's number five. Okay. She's no, she said she's gonna plant my hind end, so <laughs> she's gonna she wait you be... out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought you might have been related to the, the girl out at um... Jenny? Yeah. No. Okay. Her dad worked for me. I hired him. Oh, is that right? Ronnie. Oh Ron? Yeah. You know who he is. He I ran he ran against uh, uh He's a Democrat. Yeah, big Democrat. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it very much. Okay, thank you. All right.